Good evening, everybody. How is everybody doing tonight? We're going to do, hopefully, two fun things tonight. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Let's zoom in just a bit. Shall we? We shall. All right, so first tonight, we're gonna kinda do a double header tonight, okay? UPS is running way, way late. So we're gonna start off, cause this is super easy. I'm gonna show you, cause y'all had asked how to make this Easter egg wreath attachment. So that's what we're gonna start with tonight. Hopefully by the time I'm done, UPS will have dropped off my hummingbird kit and then once we're done with the egg, we'll do the kit. That's the hope, folks. All right, so let's get started on project one. Good evening, everybody. All right, so. This is a wooden Easter egg, y'all. I got this at Hobby Lobby years ago, and I decided to just use it as my template and... Um, I know that like Dollar Tree sells eggs this size so you can get one from Dollar Tree for a template. I'm just going to tell you the reason I don't use those from Dollar Tree because they're, you know, a dollar a piece instead of having to cut out the foam board is because they warp and bend easy when I go to cover them. The foam board is more stable. So that's why I do what I do what I do what I do. All right. So what we're what you're gonna do first, okay, is you just gonna trace around this Easter egg like you know what you're doing. Now, by all means, if you don't have good hand strength or something, you'll probably just buy the wooden ones if you do you need to buy two of the wooden from dollar tree and glue them together so it'll be more stable that's my best advice for that okay then once you have traced it get your box cutter out and cut out your magical egg shape whoop, whoop. Greg, do me a favor, plug in the T-Mobile box to the T-Mobile box. Just plug it in. Just had problems with the internet. Okay, we should be back. We should be back. I have no idea what happened. Sorry about that. Good thing we weren't in the middle of it. My internet went out. My internet didn't go out. Something happened, y'all. My internet got disconnected from my laptop somehow. Okay. All right, so at least we weren't at a crucial point. You know what I mean? All right, so now we have our foam board cut out. The first thing that you need to do, okay? The first thing that you need to do before you get going really, really good, don't forget to do this, is I use felt to put on the back. So we're going to trace out our piece of felt for our backing. And this is just to keep the back all pretty and nice. And it's important that you do this before you cover your egg, okay? Because otherwise, later on, once you put it, it'll be too big. Okay? So once you do that... Cut around, and I always cut around so that the marker disappears.
Now, normally I'm making these in bulk several time and I'll cut several layers of this at a time. Now, the reason I like making my own is because it's easier to make my own eggs to match my florals, if that makes sense. Because if you find an egg, then you gotta go match the florals. Sometimes you can't do that, so I can make my egg to match the florals that I like. For an example, we're gonna do orange and pink, okay? So orange and pink is really, really popular this year. So I can make an orange and pink one match my orange and pink florals that I have. Understand? So you can pick your florals first, then your fabrics. You can do your fabrics with fat quarters. So it makes it an inexpensive project as well. All right. So next up, I like to use quilt batting. Um, I get the twin size, um, typically high loft. And I get the twin size. You can buy more if you do more. But even when I do more, I get the twin size because it's easier to handle and cut. And I don't feel like I have as much waste when I get the twin size. Okay. However many layers is up to you. Oh, I have enough scrap. Yay. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when I have enough scraps sometimes. So however many layers that you do, that's going to be up to you, depending on how thick and lofty and, you know, you want yours. I like to do mine with four layers of the quilt batting. I like mine to be nice and, I like mine to be a little bit thick. Okay. So here's our egg. All right. And we're going to start out by hot gluing our egg onto our quilt batting. Yikes! And then what I do to make sure my quilt batting doesn't move while I'm cutting it because I stick my layers. Now, some people like to use polyfill. I don't like using polyfill because it can end up being lumpy and I don't want my project to be lumpy, okay? So that's why I choose to use quilt batting when I do my wreath attachments. And normally, if I'm doing them in bulk, y'all, I will measure so much more closer to the actual size of my egg so I don't have so much waste. But since I have scraps, that's what we're going to do. So then once we have our layers attached together, now we're just going to go around our egg. I leave about a quarter to an eighth of an inch. Around my edge. Now we have our egg. Sorry, stuff before we started. Like that. All right, so like I said, we're going to do orange and pink because it's really popular this year, orange and pink, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, the other reason I like doing these, it kind of gets rid of my scrap fabrics that I have. We're going to lay that down and we're going to give a good little guess on how much we need and cut off the excess. And there's our, our orange. All right, we're going to start out with our orange. Oh, I hear UPS, y'all. That's a good thing. Mr. UPS is here. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a little bead of hot glue across the straight edge of my fabric just to, to start with my egg. Now, for those of you that you might want to, who knows, um, you could just take something and lay it across as a, as a guide, mark wherever where you want to lay your fabric. Okay. Up to you. But we just need a little bead across the top. That's going to help hold our fabric in place as we pull it around the back. Um, the egg itself is going to end up being about 13 inches, I think, when I'm done. About it's about 12 inches, so about 12 and a quarter after it's covered. Okay. Now that we got that part done, now we're going to come around to the back. Do a little bead of glue. Same on the other side. Now keep in mind, I have zero patience. So I use my hot glue gun on low temp, so I'm not having to wait so long for it to cool. I mean, like. No patience. Actually, that's not true. I do have patience, but. I don't know if I'd still be crafting if I had to wait a long time for the glue to dry. Anybody else ever feel that way? Okay, so I like to start, put one more at the bottom. Now this part just gets easy. Don't go any further than your hand can hold is what I tell people when you do this. Unique in the creek dot com has arrived. And believe you me, folks, there's a lot of people that will sit there and go, well, why don't you just make your own? There's some people that just don't want to make these things, y'all. They just want to buy them. I just need one thing out of that box. Um, it's a hummingbird kit. That's not it. That definitely is not it. That is. Okay. And then cut the excess off. Now, when I do these in bulk, y'all, believe you me, my fabric measurements are a little bit more precise. That way I don't have so much waste. Okay. So there's what we have so far. There's the bottom. Now let's do the top. Once again, we'll put a little bead of glue 
across our fabric to get started. Miss Lori, the kit is here, so we're going to do that next. Perfect timing, because I'm just about done with this. This is really quick. Y'all get a two for tonight. Kind of awesome. Once again, come around to the side. These are actually two quick projects tonight, y'all, because we're going to do the hummingbird on the rectangle board. So have no fear. Hey, Lori, how do you like in your hey dudes, by the way? We introduced Lori to Hey Dudes her last visit. <coughs> Aren't they? Ta-da! Like I said, this was just um, scrap fabric that I had hanging around. Because y'all know I make those big bows, so... Sometimes I end up with a considerable amount of scraps. And then... The piece de la resistance. This is like the perfect thing. Y'all ever get some really pretty ribbon, but the wire in it is junk? This is the perfect solution for that. All day long. Now I'm just gonna let you know, don't push down on the ribbon when you put the glue across here, because otherwise the ribbon will come seeping through. Don't do that. Put your glue across there. And go like this okay don't don't go f f f and do not do that do not do that it will seep through i didn't put anything on top of the wooden egg we used a um, foam board yeah, just go back and watch the the replay it'll explain the whole process Wooden egg was just my template. Uh, 
Okay. Ta-da! And you can put a bow on there, flowers. You can dress it up however you want to. I'm probably just going to put a flower on it that I use for my floral arrangement. Kind of thing. But now we're going to finish it up. Put a nice backing on it. And now it's ready to go. It's just pink felt. Ta-da! And that took about 30 minutes from start to finish, y'all. So that's super easy project, super quick. And like I said, it's easier to make those to match my flowers instead of reverse. Because I have a hard time finding good quality florals local. So, I can find the flowers first and then buy the fabric to match, which is so much easier because you can buy so many other different um, patterns of fabric than you can um, flower colors, right? Okay, moving on. So, real quick, we're going to do a little bit of silence. Because when these videos, when this comes out on YouTube, we're actually going to break the two videos apart. So, a one minute pause, real quick, and I'll get set up to do the wreath. And we're back. See how easy that was? All right, y'all, tonight we are going to do the hummingbird kit. Here's how they come, okay? Literally, just, this just came off the UPS truck. Literally. All right, so let's cut it open together. In your kit, you will get one roll of beautiful mesh. You will get a package of 25 pipe cleaners, two rolls of ribbon, whoop, whoop. You will 
get two. Hummingbirds. You will get some purple and mauve ficus. And you will also get your rectangle boards and your measuring tape. For those of you that do not have a fancy setup like I do, measuring tape, all you have to do is take it out of the package. There's my Tina Kelly. And take a little scotch tape. I'm prepared, I promise y'all. And just tape it down to your table temporarily. So that you can measure your mesh. Okay. Everybody with me so far? There's our tape measure to measure our mesh. Now, let me tell you my thoughts for this kit, okay? Is it? I didn't know. <gasps> oh, it is. That's cool. Okay, so. Here's my thoughts for the kit, so let me tell you what the original plan was, so you can see. The original plan was, is that you can make two swags, or one long swag, or, or, you can make a, um, uh, you know, that, a garland. Okay, so you have three different options with this kit. Okay, but the two will give you plenty of options. I'm going to show you the original thought for the kit, which is how it was basically planned out. But I'm just going to show you one. Okay, first and foremost, we need to put some pipe cleaners on, and you just need eight of them. And you're going to, I like to fold them first and then stick them through my board, just easier. So fold your pipe cleaners up like this. And then if you just flip your board over. And so I don't get confused, I like to put my center one in first that way i get my spacing correct right off the bat put my other ones in and flip it over and then secure your pipe cleaners down like i said you only need eight
haven't gotten this kit, there's still a couple available. All right, we're going to set that aside. We are ready to cut our mesh. <laughs> this mesh is so pretty. It's like perfect for the hummingbird. You know. Okay, so the nice thing, you don't have to go and hunt something to hold your mesh down while you cut it. It's game in the box. Take your other board. And we're going to cut our mesh 20 inches. We're just going to cut eight pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect, my friends. If you're going to do the double wreaths, you'll need 16 pieces. That mesh is so pretty, y'all. So pretty, so nice. It doesn't matter how you decide to do this. If you kind of do it like me, you know, you would only need um, 16 pieces of mesh total. Whether you chose to do two or swag so that's why you only get one roll you only need one roll of mesh that's it i lost count y'all uh one more Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to ruffle on a real pretty base. Ooh. Ooh. I gotta sit down. Okay. So, this mesh does have a little bit of tendency to fray, but we are going to give it a little tuck. And then ruffle, 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 ruffle. And tie it in. Okay. Now I like to tie my ends in first. Make sure that my mesh lays over the top. So pretty. This mesh was so perfect for the hummingbirds. It has the iridescence, like the hummingbird wings. Love it. Love it. Aha! Ha 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 ha! Thought you were gonna throw me out. I got the number on the mesh. It is eight 
Look, Tina Kelly just smiled at me. I know it. Tina Kelly's over there going, Shh, I trained her well. Isn't that pretty, y'all? And Lori has this in other shades and colors. I have some in another shade and color. Now, in shop, if you get your wreath kit and want to add florals, Lori has a great selection of florals right now. So you can get some flowers to go with your kit. Okay, so there's our base. Fist my mesh. There, there. There's my base. Had, had to fist my mesh, okay? So now, here's the ribbon that comes in the kit. We got one that has got watercolor to it. Real pretty. And then this one is double sided. We chose this ribbon on purpose because it is double sided. So for those that don't like the plaid, you can do just a plain blue. It kind of gives you options with cutting the cost down. Y'all know what I mean? So you have options. If you want both of them to look different, you can do one with the plaid, one with the blue. Either way. Uh, the finished length on the base is... Dun, 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 22 inches. But what we're going to do... We're going to cut our ribbon 12 inches because that's all we really need. As soon as I find my measure buddy and quit losing my mind. There it is. Hello, my friend. Went to go grab it twice and I didn't. Measure buddy is also available at uniqueinthecreek.com. And you just need eight pieces of ribbon.
Set that to the side, and then we're going to cut eight pieces of our other ribbon. We're going to kind of do a half and half. We're going to be a little bit adventurous here. Kind of show you the full possibilities of... Sometimes when you go to the website, you'll see that the double-sided ribbon costs more, but... I want to show you the possibilities with the double-sided ribbon. All right. Now, believe it or not, if you layer your ribbons differently, they'll look different. So we're going to put the plaid on top on one set. And then our watercolor on the bottom. And the other set, we're going to put our watercolor on the top and the plain blue on the bottom. And then we're going to alternate them. Okay. So we cut these at 12 inches. Doesn't really matter which one we start with. Okay, and then the next one. It is. It is really amazing. That's one thing I love the rectangle boards. I love them, love them, love them. And my customers do too. So because my customer base loves them so much, that's what gave me this idea for the rest of y'all um, in having the ability to make two wreaths. You're already getting the two boards, so why not just put in another sign? And I'll actually, myself, I'll end up selling this wreath for, just one of the wreaths for more of the cost of the kit. So I've already made a profit just on selling one wreath. Yeah, Lori today, y'all, y'all have to check that out. It'll be on YouTube. Lori made a St. Patrick's Day hat today using rectangle boards. Super nifty, man. She nailed it, y'all. It turned out really, really good. Y'all see how nice that looks, alternating the ribbons and... 
because the hummingbird itself has pastels in it and some bright colors. So we wanted to bring those colors out. I think ficus is a great, great filler. I'm coming out with so many different colors in it this year. I'm super, super happy about that. All right. Now we got our ribbon on. So just to show you what we got so far, isn't that pretty, y'all? So we'll only need one of the purple... And one of the, this, I think this is more mauve, I guess. That's not, I don't know. I think so we need one of each of those. And y'all look. Look how much ribbon we still have left. Plenty. Plenty. Plenty, look. Plenty, y'all. Plenty of ribbon left. And we're not even really going to use that much ficus, y'all, because check this out. Okay. What we're going to do, we only need eight pieces. Anybody know where my wire cutters are at? They're there. So you may have ficus left over by the time you're done because we're just going to go one, two, three, Three. I'm cutting these off. They come in three leaf sections. And that's how I'm cutting them off is in the three leaves. And we're going to do four of the pink. Like that. And then four of the... Now, obviously, if you want to do more, you'll have plenty to do more. Look how much of that's left over. I still have two more stems. Okay. But all you have to do, you don't even need hot glue for this because these are ultra super lightweight. Just come in here with your pipe cleaner. And just tie the stem in, like so. And what I do, because I'm not going to use the pipe cleaner anymore, y'all, I don't even bother cutting it off. I just tuck it to the center of the wreath. Like I said, you can add florals to this. Lori has a um, good selection of florals right now. Nice dainty ones, dainty little flowers that are perfect. Go with the hummingbirds.
By the way, if you don't have a pair of wire cutters when you're um, making this, the ficus will nip right off with a pair of scissors. Ta-da! All right, let's get our hummingbird on here. Now it has a hook on the back. So it just kind of depends on how you want your hummingbird to lay. I kind of want mine like this to take up more length of the board. You kind of got two options to put the, this on. So it's got this metal hanger in the back. We'll use that as our first option. And then I've got a metal hole punch. That's what I'll use to put it on the bottom, but I'm gonna hang the top part first and get it situated. before I hole punch. I'll show you really quick. What I do with my pipe cleaners to keep my back really nice and clean is I just find another hole, tuck my pipe cleaner up through it. Like so. Gonna come up here to the yolk of the tail because it's pink. Come oh on, and that's where I'm gonna put my other pipe cleaner because it won't be so noticeable there. So as of right now, we only used ten pipe cleaners, so you have fifteen left to do the next one.
All right. And then to kind of finish things off a little bit, straighten our ribbon out real quick. We actually just need to put a simple bow on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut some ribbon tails and we're going to cut them 16 inches. One out of each. Color. Yeah, the other hummingbird does hang the same way. So this is for those of you that don't have a bow maker. Here's the other hummingbird. Then we're going to cut eighteen inches. Sixteen inches. I do recommend getting your little clips out. Now you can put a big bow on this if you want to, but for those that don't have all the fancy tools like I do, this is a simple way just to make a really nice bow. Well, for a long time, because I did them like they call they call that the Jackie bow. So a lot of wreath makers know that as the Jackie bow. We're going to go up here at the corner and put one more at the top. And up at the top, I'm going to cut it, my tails 14 inches. I didn't cut it 14 inches. I was looking at the wrong measurement. That's okay. 10 inches will be long enough for up here. I don't want the ribbon to be too long because I don't want it to 
cover up my bird, so that's fine. Once again, we'll do 18 inches. Sixteen inches, well, you know what, Lori? This was you know brand new idea. Doing the double kits. And just for the record, y'all, Unique in the Creek is the first one. The only wreath maker right now, the only company offering kits where you can make two wreaths with one kit. Just to let y'all know. Just a fun fact. Ta-da! I think I want to switch bows because that one's actually bigger than this one. The loops. I'm going to switch loops, y'all. I was looking at the wrong measurements on my table. Sit over there. That way it won't cover up the wing. There we go. That's better. That's better, my friends. Now we'll put this one down here because it's bigger. That's my oopsie for the night. Now, like I said, while you're there, because you know you're saving so much money getting two wreath kits in one. Get some florals to go on this. The kits are just about sold out, y'all. Going back and we're going to get ready for our close up, Deville. What I call it. And there you have it. That's what I had in mind. And then you, to make the another one, you would just do the same thing over again or different. 
can present these as doorbell door wreaths. So if you were going to present them as double door wreaths, you would do it the same. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to make the other one different, and I'm going to load it up. That way I have two different price points for the Hummingbird. The other one that I do will be loaded up, and it'll have a really big bow and stuff, so that gives two different price points. So this is actually a good craft show. You know, for those of you that do craft shows, you can make two different price points with this wreath. Well, that way you've got two different. For those that want a Hummingbird, you can have a less expensive one and then a more expensive one. Tons of options, and we do have, Lori does, and we'll have more of these double kits. Not this one, but other double kits later on. So that was one of the big new things this year is the double kits. Like I said, Unique in the Creek is the only one that's offering it, y'all. Isn't this awesome? Loving it, y'all. Loving it. All right. Thank y'all so much for hanging out. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I can't wait to see your hummingbirds. And for those of you that came in late, believe it or not, for those of you that came in late, there is also a tutorial available. And the videos will be broken up on YouTube. So there will also a tutorial available on how to make your own Easter egg wreath attachment as promised. So y'all got a double header tonight. Those of you that stay tuned but on youtube they will break the videos apart for you okay thank y'all for hanging out i will see y'all next week y'all have a great rest of your week see y'all next time bye y'all